seen in, in Guernsey uh, a referendum there where voters have backed uh, an all Ireland constituency where everyone gets to vote for all 38 members of the states. Um, could the same thing work here? I mean, you're, you're quite a keen observer in changes like this in other jurisdictions. I am, and I think it's a very interesting concept, actually, the idea of an all Ireland constituency. But the more I look into it, I think it pulls in as well the law of unintended consequences and to be careful what you wish for. I think there could be quite serious repercussions. So for a start, there is differences between the Isle of Man and Guernsey. Guernsey, in terms of area, is 25 square miles. We're 221 square miles, so we're quite substantially bigger. But also, I think you run the risk of turning politics into a rich man's game. The Ireland has roughly around about 40,000 households. In an all-Ireland election, Let's be honest, people are not going to be able to get around 40,000 doors. And one of the things that people like here on the island is they get to see the candidate on the doorstep. You only have to look at how Facebook lit up over the last election with people posting which candidates they'd seen, which candidates they hadn't. And equally, even if you ran an all Ireland campaign and you managed to do it with a manifesto going through every door for 50p a household, that's £20,000. Now, that's not an inconsiderable sum for someone to be finding. But also, the other thing I take issue with is I think that, obviously, with people not being able to get around all the doors, maybe even not get a manifesto out to all the areas, I think that gives a huge advantage to incumbents such as me, who already have the name recognition out there. And one interesting fact is there's been studies done in the UK and US on this factor of name recognition. And the rather strange thing all these studies have found is that where there is name recognition, it gives that candidate an advantage of about 5-6% in the, vote, the actual votes, not just polls, in actual votes. And it doesn't matter if that name recognition is due to something adverse, rather bizarrely. You may have had someone in the press for something, a complete disaster, but that name recognition still seems to carry that weight. And I think on an all Ireland constituency, that would make the matters worse. But could it lead to, I suppose, more meaningful politics in that uh, people would be voting on national issues and, and representatives that they think would represent them on an all Ireland basis rather than specifically issues in their constituency? Well, I think once people are elected, they are elected on an all Ireland basis. Effectively, they're there to represent the whole Ireland. What's interesting is if you go back through the manifestos of candidates over elections, there's very few successful candidates that focus purely on constituency issues. So although there's this great big thing about, you know, MHKs are dealing with garden gates, potholes and so on, on occasions, yes, we are. That's what people are coming to us with. But in terms of elections and the platform we stand on, I think it would be a very very foolish MHK or potential MHK to put a manifesto out focused purely on that and none of the national issues. You tend to find the successful candidates the ones that look at the wider sphere. And what about the argument that an all-Ireland constituency could help to boost party politics and that people could, I suppose, support a party rather than an individual within their constituency? I'm not convinced that actually would happen because party politics on the island and also if you look at Jersey and Guernsey is very very different to the UK. UK party politics evolved over 200 years from the old political system of the Tories and the Whigs and it took that long to get into place. You look at the island this, the parties haven't managed to put up a full slate of candidates in the last few elections. And my understanding certainly is that those candidates have had to fund their own campaign. So even then, you'd be looking for a candidate, if you were looking to put a manifesto out, to all 40,000 households needing to put up roughly around about £20,000. I, I just worry, like I say, that there's unintended consequences there. So while it sounds great in theory and a great boost to democracy, and there is, of course, that other argument where people are saying that, well, the island's the size of a UK constituency, so why can't we just do it? Well, again, with the UK, we've got party politics that's evolved over 200-odd years, a huge party machine between, behind each of the candidates that pays for the campaign as well. And equally, though, people are saying there's a disconnect in UK politics. For instance, I've got friends who live in the UK who've lived in the same constituency for 20 years. They've had the same MP for 20 years. They've never seen them. Uh, they're not even in the local town in the market. Um, and, the, um, and they're actually in the urban areas, not out in the rural areas. So I do worry that I think we shouldn't be necessarily copying a model that hasn't been proven to work. 
Interestingly, looking at the breakdown of the, the vote in the referendum, the option that's been favoured seems to be by far the simplest option. It's it's quite simple. Everybody votes for all 38. Is a simpler system than 12 two-seat constituencies something that should be investigated? Like I said, I think it's something we should, we should be constantly looking at a constitutional reform where we want to go. But again, I make this point about unattended consequences. At least at the moment, MHKs have a local link with their constituents. It's very easy for constituents to get hold of them. Um, and for them to be able to deal with problems on the ground. And sometimes national and local does overlap in terms of what is national policy. And it's having that understanding on the ground. But also, one of the other things, of course, is in terms of the campaign and strategy itself. Why would you bother with the rural areas on an all island constituency? If you were a candidate seeking election on an all island basis, why would you go up to Bride? and campaign for 470 votes when you can run your campaign in Douglas and be campaigning for 40% of the overall electorate. So I worry an all-Ireland basis will disenfranchise actually the rural areas. It will give them less weight because if you campaign and push on the town issues, and the rural issues are very different from the town, then and you get Douglas, Ramsey, Peel, you've got one of the 24 seats. And I just think that you would find a lot of candidates more interested in where the population is and campaigning for those large number of votes rather than going out and representing the rural areas where it's important they do have a voice. Although there is an argument to say that Douglas already has a stronghold politically given that it has overall eight representatives, so a third of the House of Keys represents Douglas re residents anyway. But the interesting thing is, with an All Ireland, you could end up with 24 representing Douglas's interests instead of eight. At the moment, it's balanced according to population. We've just had the boundaries changed at the last election. But I, and I think one of the interesting things with Guernsey will be that will be the test. Let's see when Guernsey does do the All Ireland, because as an observer of these things, I will be very interested to see if all the campaigns tend to focus around St Peter's Port and two of the other big towns rather than going out into the rural areas. So, for instance, I represent here on the island Douglas North, um, basically an urban area. Why would I go out if it was an all-island and focus on Arbury, Maloo, Bride, when I could actually go door-to-door -door in Douglas North quicker than I could go around those areas? So from your perspective, it's a case of uh, wait and see how it pans out elsewhere before we, we investigate anything here. I think so. Um, I mean, I can understand the enthusiasm for it, but like I say, it is a strange one in all Island constituency because you could end up with it actually producing the exact opposite of the arguments that are being used for it to be introduced. And I really do think that it could cause more of a disconnect between MHKs and the local communities. <laughs>